do you think with the new Bond movies coming up, they are going to reuse the Scooby Gang, or are they going to recast all of them? Oh. Yeah, uh, that is the question. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. This is Jeroen, better known as Dutch Bond fan. And once again, I'm rejoined by my good friend John from Haphazard Stuff. How are you doing, John? Very well, thank you. Good to see you again, Jeroen. Yes, we're here for episode five in our uh, six-part series of discussing No Time to Die. And this week, we're going over... Uh, the supporting cast, uh, which there are quite a few of. So we're just going to dive right into this and start off with, I think, one of the bigger ones in this one, the return of Felix Leiter. Any thoughts on uh, Felix Leiter to, to kick this off for, for this movie? Um, well, we had. I think everybody um, pretty much liked Felix since Casino Royale. Jeffrey Wright's um, take on Felix, that kind of gruff, Take yeah. that he's had on him, and it, I think it was he was a welcome return since we hadn't seen him in the last two films. Yeah, he did he did well. I like seeing him and um, Craig interact. Like they have um, they have a nice cool little chemistry. chemistry. Yeah, he didn't get a lot of screen time again, which I was kind of disappointed. Um, but I kind of expected that. I expected him to like just come come in short scene. Yeah, dialogue exchange. You know, set things up, bring him back into the service. What did you think of the return of Felix later? You know, I agree with you. He uh, he was welcomed. I do also enjoy the the continuity to to use the same actor. You know, to not go with the old movies and just cast some other guy. Um, it's been Jeffrey Wright every time in the Craig movies. I did, I did feel he seemed a bit more energetic and, and less mysterious than he was in, like, Casino Royale. Because, you know, Casino Royale, he had, like, the... And Quantum as well. Quantum especially, he had the, the, the soft-spoken lines all the time. I'm bleeding chips and all that, mm -hmm. that stuff. And now he had more, like, uh, our elected leaders, uh, you know, they're uh, not having a good time in the sandbox or something like that. It's a line like that was in the, yeah. uh, the movie. So I felt like he had more energy to him. Yeah, he was a little bit more energetic. Like some of his lines, he he was like a, very excited. Yeah, like you're yeah. right. Like he he was he was kind of a little bit more um, excited, a little bit more animated about it. like, all right, Bond, you're in the mission. All right, or something like he. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, he yeah. Was happy let's do about this, it. Bond. Yeah. It was, um, I do kind of wish that um, he um, like everybody likes the Cuba scene with Paloma. And it's it's kind of funny, like he he introduces Bond to Paloma, and then like they go off on the thing. I was like, too bad, like Felix didn't stick around for that. That scene. would have been cool to see to see him involved in that shootout with those two as well, maybe. Yeah, we we never really saw like Bond and Felix like in in action together. Like they're always we, sitting around at a bar. <laughs> right, and and not just in this movie, but I think in general, you never really see those two in action together. Maybe the opening uh, of License to Kill is as close as that gets yeah, to see them in action together. Yeah, yeah. But um, um, it, it's funny, too, because um, I think in our forecasting series, you predicted that Felix uh, would meet his doom in this, uh, in this movie, and he did. So I, I remember thinking, like, ah, John got it right. What do you know? Well, I, if anything, like you knew he wasn't going to have a huge role in this, um, so, and in a, in a way, I think like his his death was the best out of all the rest in the films, 
Yeah. He seemed like he was like a very good traditional sacrificial lamb in the in a Bond movie. Like we like him, he dies, and Bond gets a great payback on the guy who killed him later yeah. down the road. Right. Um, I think that all worked very well like, did the death scene remind you of vesper's death in any way because i've i've seen it, that pointed out yeah, yeah it did in a way because yeah the kind of him drifting back yeah yeah it, it did i get you think they that was intentional right they had to be mm, i don't know maybe i mean you you would say it could be intentional but it's definitely there's definitely a look of Craig like oh no not another one in this way yeah. you know there's 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 some of that um but yeah no you're right i i do agree this was one of the better deaths in the scene in the movie that uh that left kind of a, an impact like i i as soon as he was kind of so wounded before the the thing started flooding you, you mm -hmm. felt it coming like oh no Felix is not going to make it this time, you know, that's, um, yeah, and I guess, you know, because this is the last, uh, we've, we've discussed this countless times, because this is the last of, of an era and of a story, and they're tying up all the loose ends, they, they could get away with it, I guess. I mean, they could have easily had him survive, yeah. but I think, because, yeah, it was, this was the last, okay, we're, Craig is leaving. This is it. Burn down everything. And like Felix was, yeah. he seemed like yeah, prime target. Yeah. All the girls survive. You notice. Yeah, yeah. We talked about that one. Yeah, they yeah. All, they all do. And that's another thing I think you predicted. Um, yeah, they they that all they the were... women would survive this one. But uh, yeah, no. Overall, I think we're both kind of positive about um, Jeffrey Wright yeah. as Felix. Yeah, I, I liked I liked seeing him back. Um, even in Inspector, I, I kind of wished that he was going to come back. Like when uh, he tells Bond tells Monica Bellucci, "Oh, I have a friend named Felix. Yeah, he'll protect you." I think, oh, oh, maybe we'll see Felix pull up in a car or a helicopter, right. pick her up, and then like yeah. take her off like really fast. But um, I remember thinking exactly that in the cinema, like, "Oh, Felix, we're going to see him," but yeah, yeah, only by name. This might be a loaded question, but out of like all the Felixes that we've seen in the series, right? How does Jeffrey Wright's Felix rank for you? You know, I think he could be my top choice, mm -hmm. actually. Um, David Hedison, I think, is uh, is it's one of my favorites as well, mainly for License to Kill, mm -hmm. not necessarily for Live and Let Die. Um, Jack Lord just had the classic look. But yeah, yeah no, I think Jeffrey Wright had the the chance to do the most with it, you know, having the the chance to star in the role for three times. Um, and he's certainly memorable. So yeah, I think he he's the, he's my top one. What about you? He, he does fit in like with um like the tone of Craig's movies. Like you, I can't right. picture like Hedison being in like a Craig movie with like you know. He's he's so chipper in like you know license to kill in some in some instances like you yeah know, that, hey yeah. observer hey, yeah. Hey, hey, hey all this <laughs> like I can't picture him and Craig like you know really uh, clicking, um, but yeah I like I like Jeffrey Wright. Um, the more I think about it, I kind of would have liked to have seen Felix get a t his own tuxedo and gotten into that Cuba scene in some way, um, but other than that. Yeah, he was. It was nice to see him again. It was nice to see him. I, I have no complaints with him. Me neither. Uh, and, and it's a good point you raised because, you know, that Cuba scene was already really badass. But the, you're right to see him maybe shoot out with, with, alongside Bond and Paloma in a tuxedo, maybe in a cigar in his mouth, shooting the crap out of everything. I mean, it could. They could have had but, him. Like we know, like oh, he they they wanted to kill him off. They could have had him get like shot or something by Logan Ash somewhere in that 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 specter room or something like you know he he turns his back and like shoots like uh, Felix when he's about to like warn Bond about something or something like they could have done something where yeah Felix gets shot somewhere in there they they take him away to the boat and that's where like he finally ultimately dies but they could have incorporated I think Felix in that scene somehow but, I mean, like, it, it, it might have taken some of the shine off Paloma, but 
Maybe. Um, yeah. Do you think um, another question about Felix and, and this Bond? Do you think this um, Craig's James Bond would he be the best man at this Felix's wedding? Hmm. I, I, you know, I could picture that stuff. You know, um, if yeah, maybe they what. It's a difficult question, that one. But I can picture, like, the beginning of Lice to Kill with, with Jeffrey Wright and Daniel Craig. I, I could picture that stuff. What, about, yeah. what do you think? I can't, I can't picture these guys in a bright outdoor wedding, sipping, like, you know... The top hats, you know, that's hard to... Yeah, uh, like... That's hard to, uh, to all picture. Clean, all cleaned up, like, you know, around, like, relatives and in-laws. And, like, yeah. you know, trying to... And being, like, you know... Uh, very relaxed and uh, sunny. Yeah, I can't. I can't picture it. <laughs> it'd be it'd be weird. But like these guys, they sit over bars drinking Heinekens. Yeah. Saying, oh yeah, let's get the the scientists. It would certainly need... it would certainly be filmed in a different way, but um. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> like in the context of like the way I think of like that license to kill wedding. It, no, Craig and Jeffrey Wright they. <laughs> They would be like the 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 odd odd guests out like <laughs> at that place. Right. Um, also returning is the uh, the Scooby Gang, of course, uh, for yeah. a time in a row now that we're introduced to uh, Ray Fiennes um, uh, playing M, as well as uh, Ben Wishaw returning to play Q and Naomi Harris as Money Penny. Uh, all of which I really like. Also, Bill Tanner, by the way, who who played. Uh, since quantum so uh which one do you want to start with with the out of these let's go for tanner because tanner. Um, all right i think tanner had a little bit more more screen time than money penny in this movie i seem to remember more of tanner than money penny hmm. is it just Maybe. me you know i don't have like a schedule with with how many minutes each of these actors yeah, was yeah. in but um you know, I remember a little bit more Money Penny. I think Tanner mainly. I remember like that that one scene uh, near the waterfront with um, mm -hmm. where where Bond has this has a little conversation with M, and, and you hear the Majesty's music playing in the background for whatever reason. And then uh, the Tanner shows up there. I read something about that scene. Yeah, uh, I think I I know what you're gonna come up with, but go ahead. <laughs> They, when they were shooting that scene, the the, uh, the script, they had no idea like how it would be worked into the movie. Can you believe yeah. this? Yeah, you would think after all these years they would have like a a finished uh, script at that point. But that's that's why like it, I, I'm really anxious in five years time, or, or seven years or whenever when we get the real story about the production because there was a lot more stuff going on than just like like the pandemic delays it must oh, be oh, yeah. absolutely it seemed like that that script was um always in flux yeah um but tanner uh did tanner have any uh standout moments for you you know this is probably the one out of the scooby gang i'm i'm always the the shortest about you know i like rory kinnear as tanner I, I, he's very um memorable but he's always the one out of the scooby gang that doesn't stand out the most if you get what i mean because you, you're asking me to pinpoint like a standout moment does he really get one in this movie i don't know out of the other ones they they all have something worth mentioning but rory kinnear he's usually there he brings a, a decent performance and he's a familiar face mostly you know some nice continuity but i don't ha have much to bring to the table about tanner at all in this movie actually he's just he's, yeah. he's there again he does his job Kind of like that stuff. He gives out the exposition, the details of what's going on. Tells M, oh, the ships are coming, or what should I tell them? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, that kind of stuff. They they could have uh, they could have killed him off, and uh, I wouldn't have like really flinched. It's um, better that they chose Felix, I think, to for to do that. Then I wouldn't have had much of an impact. Which, by the way, is funny and ironic, maybe, because I think in the novels, Bill Tanner is supposed to be one of Bond's best friends that, that oh. go those way back, you know, in um, 
he, he's a very good relationship with uh, with Tanner in the novels. But here, yeah, you can be very short about him. Yeah, I can't picture like him and Bond hanging out like after hours. No, like, it doesn't seem like they would haunt the same places. Yeah, it doesn't seem like they'd have too much to talk about. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, moving on to to what I think okay. was m- one of the the more interesting ones, uh, Q, which I think is uh, Ben Wishaw, uh, was one of the most hilarious characters again. Very very funny uh, comic relief, and I I like what what Ben Wishaw is doing with Q. It's like it's you know he doesn't need to be a new Desmond Llewellyn. He's not trying to be. He's his own separate mm-hmm. character. Yeah. An example is the one where um, he comes to the office and, oh. and he's like, oh shit, 007 is here. I got to pretend that I have never seen him before up until this point. It's like, yeah. hey, 007, what, what a surprise. I had not seen you. And, and then Emma's yeah. like, got it, Q, we already know. Oh. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's yeah, that hilarious. Was Same with the uh, apartment scene where... Um, all of a sudden, like in the intercom, you see Bond and Money Penny at his apartment, and he's about to have like a date with some some dude, which, mm-hmm. by the way, um, <clears throat> might be another topic. They they made him uh, homosexual this time. Yeah. yeah. Any, uh, any anything mentioning there, or because I was completely fine with that. I think it suited his his character. I I really I didn't care. Same. I didn't care if. if all I want from this character is to him, like, to come up with neat gadgets in the lab. I, I don't I, really care what he does or what they're going to do with him, like, <laughs> after hours. I, I, you know. So, I, I, I didn't, I didn't really make, I didn't even flinch, like, what it. No, like, no. Oh, yeah. No, because there, there are, you know, people that think, like, you know, to bring this back to, is, is this woke enough or something? I don't mm-hmm. think. In that territory with Q and the and the gay stuff, fine. You know, it's not in your face or anything. It's and he's a fun character. He's uh, yeah hilarious uh, in this one. The, mean, the little quirks he has, like eating the candies while he's um, while he's doing the the, the the hacking and stuff. Yeah, it's, it's fun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he he's he's still a, a fun character. Um, the. the the gay thing like oh is he gay is he not gay is it necessary i i don't care if they really want to do it then fine just don't let it get in the way of you know the character's function in the movie right (laughs) and it didn't color him gay no and he 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 tracks the nanobots and everything that's that's the importance of this character if they want to make him gay or whatever then fine i i don't really have an issue with it i asked leary as well when i watched the movie with her you know she, she she was fine but it she actually said like yeah wasn't he already in the the previous ones mm-hmm. like oh, not that i necessarily know of i mean it wasn't I really confirmed in skyfall or specter but she already thought like yeah i thought she thought it was revealed in the previous ones already oh, maybe I missed her. Uh, it, it wasn't i think but i guess i mean in a way well, his introduction He's kind of is metrosexual in his. Um... Yeah, like in, in Skyfall, when his introduction comes, it almost appears like, oh, Bond might think that this guy's trying to pick him up, like when he sits on the bench in the museum. Like, oh, look at this guy. Uh oh. So this guy's going to, like, you know, come on to me or something. But, like, I never that's looked really at that reaching. scene in that way. Yeah. I never. Yeah. It's well, reaching. It's reaching. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, but, but overall, uh, any other. Think so about Q that you? Uh... No, they got his cats in the on on the screen. Oh right, the cats. Uh, he's listening to his music. Like I, I, I he he's like the the one character out of the Scooby Gang that I don't mind seeing in the field. A Q. Right, I like, agree. Even going way back to uh, Desmond Llewellyn, like seeing him like pop up in Thunderball in the Bahamas, saying, "Oh, I didn't even have any like a moment's notice to come out here, at 007." Yeah. Uh, when they start like incorporating, like, "Oh, now Money Penny's like you know in the in the fray, and M is in the fray." Yeah. yeah. Like I can understand like Q, like you know being on the on the uh, plane, like talking to talking Bond through the um, the thing and everything. Uh, yeah, that that reminded me a bit of uh, what they're doing with the the Mission Impossible movies, the latest ones. He's kind of like the the Bond the, version of of Benji, uh, if you remember him. Uh, yeah, the um, what the, the tech guy. 
Benji. Uh, um, uh, Simon Pegg. Simon, Simon Pegg. Yep. Simon Pegg. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's kind of that type of character. You know, he yeah. he's also like the comic relief smart guy that supports uh, crews through the field. Um, yeah. He, very he, similar. He, that's that's his function in the movies to me, and as long as he can fulfill those functions. That I'm fine, and I think Wesha like has been doing very well in that part. I agree, yeah. and yeah. it's another positive one, really. The, the supporting yeah. characters actually they're doing a good job with it. Yeah. Which, by the way, one last thing about Q. Did you mm-hmm. remember in our forecasting series we were speculating about the glass of his front door that it was the same glass as oh, like the, yeah. that Safet came in with the mask because it's like mm-hmm. the similar. Yeah, How wrong yeah. were we on that one? It's just that it wasn't even... just happens to have the same glass as the as yeah. Madeline's house. That that's um that's a a great example of reading too much into something. It's <laughs> us. Yeah, we're examining this stuff like yeah, that. we're like holy shit. So Q is in the house that Safet. No, we were completely uh, yeah, just we're similar glass. Period. Completely wrong. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but um, another one is uh is uh M, returning, again. Yeah. Ray finds um. You know, he uh, he's actually story-wise kind of responsible for Bond's demise in a way, co-responsible. It's I kind of so. dark when you think about it. When you know that M's behind this whole Hercules program thing with the with the nanobots, this this bio weapon. Um, yeah, I don't know. What did you What did you think of uh, M? I wish, like, I said it to you. I I sound like a broken record. Why can't we get an M who just he he he's he, they're good at the job he or she they're good at their job they're just handing out the missions they don't they say do this uh, do this this is your objective 007 go off and then like show up like you know maybe mid mid midway through the movie and at the end after it's all done they have to incorporate um, M into a big story. Like Bernard Lee, like he ne- he never went through like you know all this. Yeah. Like like with Q, M has a function in the story, like the traditional M. They they would just give the exposition, hand hand the mission to Bond, and that's it. Let Bond go on his way. What was the last one? It was um the he he has to battle C, and the um the uh the double O program being disbanded and. I had to give him something to do, like you know, while Bond is on the, out in the, uh, yeah. Yeah, but I I do think um, they did it better this time around, with the whole Scooby Gang, because they weren't as involved. Yeah. Uh, well, in 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 such a forced way, like they were in Inspector. Yeah, like, that like, I that um, I'll agree. Yeah, that, you know, it's not like M yeah. is battling like another one to to to, to prove like like that the double O uh, section is in fact relevant and all that stuff. You know, we at least that's buried, and we we got we got that done. They 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 limited the Scooby Gang to mainly the office. That's where they should be. They didn't have to like start incorporating like they're driving down, going to safe houses and uh, driving down alleys and um all this stuff. They they limit them. They, um... That's that's another thing. The the office scene, when as soon as Bond actually gets in the office, that was another fun new part of writing. Like Bond is like, did this desk become smaller? You know, and, that, mm-hmm. and then he's kind of yeah. going at at M because he he really doesn't care. He's like, well, you know, they they don't need me and they I'm not in the service anymore. But I'm now I'm here and he's kind of pissed about M. It's like and and then also one upping him about um, you you man you're thirsty today that's what he also says to M when uh, when he grabs another drink and then they, they go at each other it's fun it's new and then as soon as he walks out it's like yeah the desk is definitely the same you know something like that it was definitely the same desk it's um, I don't know I I like this this new um, not necessarily new but this fresher form of chemistry between them it's um i mean in skyfall it seemed like they he he established some respect for mallory in skyfall and then since then i haven't seen too much (laughs) like inspector he says you have no you had no authority to go in mexico and like he's not telling 
Mallory M. Like why exactly he's he was in Mexico because of Judy right. Dench's message and everything. In this mm-hmm. one, he comes back. He he kind of insults him about his um his desk and everything. I would just like to see like an M <laughs> come back. It's I know it's it's I'm um, maybe I'm old fashioned. Just see an M like mission break, be the mission boss. Folder. Mm. Be the boss and and uh you know like when when they had to they would put bond in his place like in goldfinger remember like uh, that great scene he puts bond in his place and like bond kind of like backs off a little okay okay yeah i'm i'm I, I hope in the next incarnation of the series we go back to like and, and I know we see why they're doing it because they cast Judy Dench in as M. It's the now star got, power, really. That's the yeah. Thing. They got they got Ray Fiennes as M, and these people are like big names. They they're too too big to waste in just a traditional little supporting part, I guess. And they have to give them yeah. more to do. And what they're giving a lot of the them to do in a lot of these films, I don't think is all that interesting. Uh, they could be spending the time more wisely on other aspects of the movie or other other um, other elements like spend more time on sap and like tr- tr- make let us try to figure out what the heck is going on with that guy rather than spending more time on m and uh i i know ne- i didn't have any intention of this being a, a a weapon of mass destruction and then also with the he's responsible like you said he's responsible for bond's death he's responsible for this Heracles and responsible for a lot of the crap in this movie. It's, yeah, and, it's and, kind of dark. And there's no repercussions on him, I guess. He just goes back and you know he he raises a drink to Bond in the end. Yeah, which, which kind by of... the way I did like the um, that ending with uh, with the Scooby Gang and the, the. I shall not waste my days trying to prolong them. Even though, in that that scene of here's the James Bond. Yeah. And. Uh, I was watching it and I'm thinking, like, shouldn't like M be in like the cage that Blofeld was in there right now? <laughs> shouldn't he be like yeah. held responsible for some of this stuff? Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. It's funny seeing like Ray Fiennes as M because I remember back uh, back in the day, like when he was like one of the uh, rumored candidates to be Bond to play a uh, play uh, yeah. James Bond. You know, and, and because he's he's obviously. You know Harry Potter's biggest uh, enemy in uh, in mm-hmm. Lord War. You would think he would make a, a terrific villain as well. Like maybe he could have been a great Blofeld. And yeah, know, that's always uh, that's always something that was on my mind. You know. I mean, uh, um, in uh, Schindler's List, he's chilling. He is just terrifying in that movie. Yeah, he's also going to star as the the lead the leading man in the the new uh, Kingsman prequel, which I think is coming out around this time of the year, pretty much. Oh yeah, that's soon. right. Yeah, you're gonna, yeah, you're gonna be online for that, right? Yeah, no, definitely want to check that one out. Oh. Did you see the trailer for Operation Mincemeat? No, not yet. It comes out in January. Colin Firth is in this, and it's like about the plan of, of the Allies to spread dis, uh, misinformation to the Germans about like the the invasion. In in the movie, uh, Fleming shows up. Because he was part of the operation, and like oh, it, cool. you'll see it in the trailer, where, like he they say, "What are you doing, Fleming?" He says, oh, "I'm writing a spy novel." You know, like, but Little it looked really. It, it it looked it looked good. It like, I was like, "Oh yeah, I, I, I'd like to see this." So, uh, um, that leaves one last character, I think, as a supporting mm-hmm. character, which is Money Penny. Um, not much of saving the best for last in this one, but because uh, um, he didn't get that much to do other than being featured in Q's apartment and being yeah. being there. A little reference to uh, with, with her and Lashana, like, oh, I get why you shot him. Like, yep, mm-hmm. one uh, has to try. But I did, I do like Naomi Harris, and and you asked me the question just now about who my favorite Felix would be. Yeah. I do feel, and this might be more controversial than than with Felix, but I do feel Naomi Harris might be my favorite Money Penny as well. Mm-hmm. And and okay. I know like Lois Maxwell is kind of like the holy grail yeah. of, of Money Pennies. He's the one yeah. that's, that did it fourteen times. But 
Yeah, ever since Skyfall, I liked her, even though we've only seen her in, in three Bond movies. She, she stands out a lot more than what Samantha Bond got to do with her or um, Carolyn oh. Bliss, I think, from, yeah. from uh, the Dalton ones. So, yeah, I, I don't know. It's um, she, she, And she's by far the hottest money, Penny. I mean, there's that. Yeah, she's beautiful, yeah. But she yeah. looked good. She looked nice. She didn't get as much screen time as... Um... Well, obviously in Skyfall, like she had like, she was a uh, held yeah. bond on like the whole thing and the casino and stuff. Yeah, and Skyfall. He, my 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 whole thing was I I completely was under the impression she was just the Bond girl, and I, I I still don't know to this day how I managed to keep that unspoiled to the actual ending that she was Money Petty. Yeah, I did not know that until the cinema viewing. And when when that happened in Skyfall, were you like? legitimately surprised and like, I was uh, I was which which in retrospect is so weird because I ever because I see like it was spoiled to everyone like you know how it was spoiled to everyone that Oberhauser was Blofeld I and mean, that was no surprise right. but this one yeah I, I don't know it, back in Skyfall that was I'm still happy that it was a surprise to me uh, when I first it saw is, that it is kind of funny like thinking back like how the big secret of Skyfall well, I mean, we we had M's death too, I guess, but yeah, we had M's death and um, oh, she's Miss Money Penny, and yeah. the, you compare that to like all the secrets in No Time to Die. Yeah, no, that's nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, all the characters die in this one. <laughs> Pretty much. If you have a penis, you're dead in this. <sighs> um, yeah. So like Money Penny, um, the, the, that was one thing, like. The, the banter between her, uh, like Money Penny and Bond, is always like you know the thing that we we want to see, and it seemed like now this time they had know me. Yeah, that she kind of took she, that over. Yeah, yeah, she she took that from like Money Penny. So I, I don't really remember anything, any big lines, memorable no, lines, or um, uh, no no real because fl- they could have returned some of the flirting that. A, to be more traditional to the older movies, and B, because there was chemistry between them, uh, you know, even in the previous one where where she happens to have, like, a, a man over at night and then and Bond's like, who's who's that oh, voice? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, yeah. I have a life, too, at this time of night? You know, that's mm-hmm. uh, that was yeah. fun, uh, fun little band for that. Was, there was none of that. So, I mean, it, that's, it's, it's a tiny complaint. It's not, it wasn't really on my mind, either. It's just something that comes up to me now. That we're talking about it, but you're right. Nomi kind of took that, yeah, that band which, in a non-sexual is, way. It's a, it's okay. Like Money Penny doesn't have to be a, um, uh, a major presence in every movie. Like no. if she's, if she, they didn't have to like, uh, if they don't have a spot for her, then let her do her little traditional scene in the office and then be done with it. Yeah. Um, and Naomi Harris, like she's like the ambassador to like the Bond series now. Like I see her at like all the events and like you know, yeah, promoting it on social media. She promoted and... the uh, the Lego DB5 that I yeah. have in the living room, and so... I think it was her that uh, promoted that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So they're lucky they uh, they have her. Yeah, yeah. And this raises the final question to to end this video with: Do you think? With the new Bond movies coming up, they are going to reuse the Scooby Gang, or are they going to recast all of them? Oh. Yeah, uh, that is the question. If if I had to bet, I would say that they would bring them back. That they, I think like they they have a nice supporting cast, and I don't think they're going to be too anxious to lose them. Is it going to confuse? mainstream audiences oh yeah yeah because they're gonna have like bond 26 is gonna come out and i already hear it like people like well they can't do james bond movies anymore he died i don't understand like how people aren't savvy enough to not understand it's just a reboot like i i I would figure after like the these last 20 years of like marvel movies people would understand and say oh you just hit the reset button and and uh, that's the thing. That's the reaction I've been getting as well. Like it's like I'm just, I'm so curious. How are they gonna continue now? What is it, are they gonna do? Yeah, no, like, 007. I'm like, come on. It's uh, it, this I, has been rebooted 
like before I mean, track yeah, too. Like they've they've had new actors step into this thing for the last sixty years. So like I don't understand yeah. like how people are so confused by this. Like they I think but, but they really this... think that like you know they're gonna oh the only way they could do it is like you know Daniel Craig uh, uh, just kind of crawls out of the rubble and then like maybe he survive. No, no, it's just going to be a complete new thing. Um, yeah. And they, but this is a, a casual audience drive. Yeah. Um, um, I, I, yeah, at least the most Bond fans know. But, but like, yeah, I am surprised about how much I see of that. It's just, yeah, it's 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 always surprising me. Like when I read the comments and stuff. And then yeah, like that's... with with Q and uh, Money Penny and M. Like all those actors returning, I think it's just going to add to more of the confusion to like you know these people. Which is why I think they are going to recast the whole thing. I think really? I do feel like Naomi Harris and Ben Wishaw and Ray Fiennes they all would want to return if they got the chance, but they might just be, be the the Scooby Gang of the Craig movies. I think mean, I think mean, we we both don't have a future sight to, to know, but yeah, I feel they they might just go with a complete clean slate. And I know they, they did it with Judy Dance, where they got her from Boston, yeah. lifted her into the reboot. They brought her over. Yeah, and and they made her a different M than the M that she was in Boston's movies, because she was, that's a whole different conversation, but she was an M that was actually around before the Cold War, and she's been a seasoned M in the Craig movies, whereas in, in Boston, obviously, she came after the, the Cold War. I think she had a different name as well. Like, one of them is Emma Mansfield, and the other one... This is another. You could look it up, but she plays two separate M's, the uh, Judy Dance. Yeah, yeah, but but here, you know, we this is something we're gonna look back in 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 2040 when uh, Bond 26 <laughs> uh, comes out. But yeah, but by the time the next one comes out, we're gonna see who's right. But I feel I would want to see them return. They were all, especially the the main three like Money Penny and um, M and and uh, Q. Um, I would want to see them return, but I think they're just going to go with a new Felix, a new Money Penny, a new M. Um, just a whole new. It's a wait and see. Yeah. A whole new cast for the uh, new Bond. Yeah. It it really depends. That's the thing. It really depends on what direction they're going to go in next. It's hard to tell, but. Um... I mean, it would be kind of strange if. They decide. Oh well, we really like Ben Wishaw's Q. We're gonna stick with him, but we're gonna recast all the other parts. Right. So like you have like one holdover. It's from a package the other deal. One. Yeah. It's it's <laughs> not like it's not so like they can't with... break it up. They 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 no, won't be able I don't to break see... it up. <laughs> no, it's either you you bring all of them back or none of them. It's not like Judy Dent where you could just bring her. I feel maybe with Ray Fiennes you could just do just him, but. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I, I feel like they're they're probably gonna recast the whole uh, the whole shebang, um, yeah. which yeah, is a shame be... too, because they were they were good. But who knows? I mean, <laughs> who knows? We yeah, we don't know where like Barbara's head is anymore. No. Well, we'll, uh, we'll have to wait and see. It's gonna, it's gonna be interesting to see like what if this was the last that we're gonna see of those characters by those actors. Yeah. Um, no. We'll uh, we'll talk about that uh, with Bond twenty six whenever that is. <laughs>